السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان فارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful All praise is due to Allah We bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah And we bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is indeed his final messenger the best of speech is the book of Allah and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who listen to the best of speech, the book of Allah and follow its commands. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who look for the best of ways, the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make us amongst his followers. Allahumma ameen. Ya Ahbaba Rasulillahi sallallahu wa rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi yuqarriru lana al-Qur'anu fi kitabi Rabbina jalla wa ala haqiqatan ala al-Bashar. Yaqul Rabbuna jalla wa ala walau shaa rabbuka laja'ala al-nasa ummatan wahida wala yazaluna mukhtalifina illa man rahima rabbuk wali thalika khalaqa. So beautifully the Qur'an tells us a fact of life that must be accepted. And brothers and sisters, please remember the following. That we human beings, whenever we are faced with a challenge, certain challenges in life, it is only wise that you do nothing but you accept. 
And then there are certain challenges in life that you must either fight back, modify, and change. We become miserable as individuals, as a society, when we switch roles. The minute we try to accept or we accept the things that we can actually change, or we start attempting to change the things that we can actually, that we should actually accept, then we are inviting misery into ourselves. Wisdom is about knowing which things can I really accept because that is the only wise option that I have. And then when we start fighting the things that we can only accept it, subhanAllah, it will just come upon us with a source of misery. And that's why in the hadith, the Prophet wasallam so beautifully gives the example of a believer. It's like that of the bushel tree. That when this small tree, when the great strong winds comes to it, it does not stand up to fight back. It just goes with the wind. When the wind goes away, it comes up again. But then also the Prophet ﷺ speaks of those. Despite their own weaknesses and the strength of the wind, they still remain standing. And all of the sudden, they get uprooted. And in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us to accept the fact that people are different. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Had it been the will of thy Lord, he would have made all people into one kind. One believing in the same. One colored skin the same. One speaking the same language. One having the same beliefs. One having the same thoughts. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that was not the will of your Lord. Not that he is not capable, he is fully capable of it, but that is not what he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and they will remain to dispute amongst themselves. That is just one aspect of being humans. That the fact that we are different socially, psychologically, intellectually, honestly, inevitably, we're going to be different. In all aspects. <laughs> and they will remain to dispute. They will dispute forever. That is just how humans operate. Depending on what it is that we are disputing about, certain aspect of our differences can only be resolved by tolerating one another. Certain aspects of our differences can only be solved by just accepting the fact that we will be different when it comes to this. SubhanAllah, even concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Even concerning Allah himself, People are going to dispute over them. So what do you do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Relax. <laughs> so it will be your Lord. He who is going to judge between them in the day of judgment. Certain differences will only be kept till then. But what we're concerned about here is, how do we go about just accepting this? Because sometimes it is very, very difficult. And is it possible that we can differ but remain united, especially as Muslims? And that is why it has been so beautifully said that civilization, how civilized people are, said it should be measured by one thing. Well, how do you measure civilization amongst people? Said it should be measured by the level of, by the degree of diversity attained and by the degree of unity retained. Civilizations, how civilized people are, can be measured by the degree of diversity attained, that everybody feels free to speak their mind, to speak their belief, to really be who they, who they really are, not what everybody else forces them or expects them to be. So it's said that civilization is to really be measured by the degree of diversity attained and by the degree of unity retained. Meaning that, can we be diverse but united? Can we be different yet collected? Can we be all over the place but yet there is a common ground? 
that will not break us apart. Come on, Wallahi, people are different. Your own children are different. My wife and I are different. Siblings are different. Despite the fact that we all come from the same source, we're just different. As it has beautifully been said, we all see the sky, or we all look up there, but we see different horizons. It's the same thing that we're looking at, but we have a tendency to see different horizons. So we are being asked by people of faith that these differences amongst us are inevitable. How do you go about reacting to these differences are going to determine how civilized you are as a society and how civilized you are as an individual. And for this, brothers and sisters, we really want to emphasize on two khuluq, traits that we must have. In the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, refers to it as al-hilm wal ana'a, that moderation and tolerance. Moderation and tolerance. We must have this. It was beautifully said that this man by the name of Ashaj Abd Qais has a really interesting story of how he became a Muslim. This person was an older man. His daughter is married to this man by the name of Al Munzir. Al Munzir comes into Medina and he meets with the Prophet. And he's really impressed with Muhammad. And he said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, sits down with him and he's asking him about where he comes from and the tribe that he belongs to. And tell me about your people. And he said that he, the man, went on telling the Prophet, peace be upon him, about his people by name, and this man, and this man, and Prophet Allah, there is this man, and this man. He goes back. He goes back to his wife, who happens to be the daughter of this man. We'll talk about Al-Ashaj, Al-Ashaj Abd Qais. And after a while, the woman is observing her husband, and she comes to her dad, and she said, Dad, any istagharabtu ma kana min zawji min ba'di awdakihi min yathrib. said that, my husband has been a strange man since his trip to Yathrib, to Medina. He said, what is it about him? He said, Ya Rasulullah, he is a strange man. Ya Rasulullah, he is a strange man. He said, proud of Allah, this man has been cleaning himself in ways that I have not seen before. I see him bowing down and I see him prostrating. And I see him just saying things that I really don't understand. Speaking about positive change that has taken place. So they meet with the husband, the son-in-law, and they all decide that, you know what, we love the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they all rush to meet with the Prophet, peace be upon him. And they said that as soon as people came to Medina, everybody is rushing to see the Prophet, peace be upon him, except this man. Ashaj Abdul Qais. He said the man put his stuff together, went and took a shower, put his best clothes, and he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, is so impressed with this man. That everybody else, despite the fact that they all made it there before him, the Prophet sallallahu said, come, sit next to me. What appears to be he came in late, in reality he really came in the earliest. And the man starts talking and the Prophet is so impressed with this man and he looks at him and goes, Fika khislatan, wa fi ruwaya inna fika khislatan, fika khislatan. He said that you have two qualities about you that Allah and His Messenger adore. They love it in you. And the man said, what is it, Prophet of Allah? And the Prophet ﷺ said, al hilm wal anama He said that you are a man of moderation and that you are a man of tolerance. Allah loves moderation and Allah loves tolerance. The idea of tolerance, accepting the fact that we are different. See, brothers and sisters, let me just tell you this, and let me be very frank with you. With all what's happening around our world, I'm going to be specific about what is happening in Egypt. You know, I just see what this thing is doing to us as a community. Whether you call it a necessity, whether you call it a coup, whether you call what happened illegal, whether you call it a sense of oppression, I'm looking into what it is doing to people. SubhanAllah, people are literally, where you stand on this issue is going to determine how, feel I, how I feel about you. Where you stand on this issue is going to determine how far or close I will be to you. People speak about, you know what, people have just blocked me off their Facebook. 
People have sent me emails saying that I don't want to be talking to you anymore. People have stopped calling me. I posted certain things on my Facebook and now the people have stopped talking to me because now I have been categorized with that group of people saying, are you serious? Are you really serious? Now these are supposedly people who attend the same masjid, worship the same Lord and read the same book. And with all of this, it is the first time that people became different. They just couldn't tolerate one another. Just could not tolerate one another. And you look into this and say, but wait a minute. We thought that civility is going to be measured by the degree diversity attained and the degree of unity retained. So the very first thing that we differ about, <coughs> because simply we are humans. Now what has happened, it is just shattering us left and right. So, okay, people say, so what is your opinion? I say, my opinion will not really change practically what is happening there. But I will tell you what it will do locally. My opinion will not change what is happening practically over there. But it will definitely do a lot of damage locally here. Why is that? Because we have not really reached that level of maturity where we would say, we still can be diverse, but still retain our unity. And brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, I say, that is just Islamically unacceptable. Sometimes we get too arrogant about our opinions. SubhanAllah, even in religious communities, people have a tendency to become too dogmatic. That sometimes we pretend that we are infallible. That we are the only ones who can see and everybody else around us is blind. And by the way, that is just not because you support this group. The other group also feels the same way. That they see you as blind. That you are the one who doesn't see. That you are the one who is egotistic. That you are the one... Say, that is not... That is not the character of a believer. And what happens here is that, yes, please, we can engage in meaningful debates with one another. We can do all of this. But by the end of the way, by the end of the day, are we able to still retain a sense of unity amongst ourselves? Let me tell you this. You know, 50 years ago, or August 28th, you know, people were celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. And you've got to love the man. Allah, I love that man. And you know, here is a person who spoke 50 years ago. And subhanAllah, the man loved this idea of tolerance. But at the same time, along with him, lived another man by the name of Malcolm X. You know, when people went to the march in Washington, Malcolm X called it the farce in Washington. He had absolutely no respect for that. He would speak and he would say, look man, Preaching non-violence to people who are being the victims of brutal attacks. He said that is just not fair. How can you preach to them non-violence when they are the victims of brutal attacks? He would speak to his people and he would say, If you are not willing to do whatever it takes to protect your freedom, then eliminate it from your vocabulary. He would speak in such a tone to his people, but the two men had the highest respect for one another. They knew that their approach was different. And here comes Martin Luther King Jr. And he speaks about tolerance in what becomes one of the most beautiful, most strongest speeches in the history of mankind. And you know, subhanAllah, what happened in that speech? said that Dr. King starts talking and then he just puts his paper aside. His speech was written and supposedly there was a script for it. But he just puts it aside and now he starts talking to the people. That I have a dream part of the speech that we all remember. That was not written on the speech. The man just puts it aside and he said, Man, I have a dream when my children are going to be valued in the society, not because of the color of their skin, but because of their character. Well, you know, you hear stuff like that and you say, it takes a lot of wisdom to make that statement. It takes a lot of optimism to actually be able to make that statement in the 1960s and 50s. Are you serious to make a statement like this? When people have two different fountains for the blacks and the whites and two different restaurants for the blacks and the And yet he comes out and he said, this is what I'm dreaming about. And here's what we will tell you. Tolerance, then violence, <coughs> gets us a lot further 
than the use of violence. Wallahi, wallahi tolerance and non-violence gets us, gets us a lot further than the usage of violence. And that is why we say in Islam jihad is the exception, it is the spreading of peace that is the norm. But people switch things around as if you know jihad, you know, jihad is this core teachings of Islam. Okay, jihad is the core teaching of Islam when all peaceful means fail. But it says really the effort should be put in how much peace are you able to acquire. And you know when we look into this brothers and sisters, we learn from history. Because subhanAllah, the immediate verse after the verse that we recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Immediately Allah reminds us of, of history. And we relate to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, stories from the past so that you may find tranquility in your heart. Looking into this, brothers and sisters, please, please differ. But it cannot be at the expense that when people utter their diversity, we are unable to retain our unity, then sadly we would say, we are a society and a community that has not reached maturity or civility. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from this, Ya Rabbi. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا من الله. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسوله المصطفى وعلى من بآثاره اكتفى Tolerance is a prerequisite for peaceful coexistence. Moderation, brothers and sisters, is really, really important. We have to have what we call the ethics of disagreement amongst one another. And again, we have to agree to disagree agreeably. Tolerance is not passive morality. Wallah, it is not to be passively moral. Because I tolerate, it does not mean that I accept. So like the Prophet وسلم, said, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دِينُ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دِينُ You know, people look into these verses, and this happens to be like the fourth the surah that is revealed. And it begins by saying, look, you have your ways, and I have my way. It used to be during the time Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you know what? It is only my way. But the Prophet said, Lakum Dinukum, Waliya Deen. To you is your way of life, you live it however you want. And to me is my way of life. I just want to share with you what I think it is. Or how I think it should be. Other than that, it is totally up to you. Even though we want to tolerate, but we must also agree that the killing of innocent people is not acceptable. That degassing of innocent people is unacceptable. That is not tolerance. That is just being criminal. And you don't say that, oh, let's see, maybe there is an excuse. There is none, man. There is none. So what we say is that, yeah, be tolerant, but never accept the wrong. Father Desmond Tutu from South Africa beautifully put it. He said, in a situation of injustice, if you decide to be neutral, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. And that is not acceptable. Yeah. So we are tolerant, but we will not be part of that. We will never okay anything like this. So be it happening in Syria, be it happening in Egypt, we would say, look man, you can have any view that you want, but one thing should be clear. And that is the dehumanization of people that takes place. Man, you should see what people say nowadays. They would have an image of somebody who was innocently being killed. Beat a police officer or beat a civilian. They just have nothing to do with what's happening. And you see the name calling. Oh, the dog is dead. Are you serious? We believers make statements like this. You can't, man. You can't. And that is where the idea of our ethics, of our akhlaq, it comes in. And that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا شنآن قوم على let not your hatred of people cause you to wrong other people. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, be just and be fair, for that is where piety is. So what we look for is where piety is. Please, brothers and sisters, and I conclude with this, like I said, man, there is very little that we do to practically impact the situation over there. But it will be very sad that we can disagree about it and be scattered locally without really doing anything globally to what is happening there. Wallahi, nobody, nobody benefits out of this. And please remember, as we always like to remind ourselves, if you really like to see tolerance, please begin at home. Wallahi, if you really want to see tolerance, please begin at home. We can't really be saying that, you know what, we need the Sunnahs and the Shias to come together and resolve their problems. Akhi, please, why don't we start by resolving the problem between you and your brother whom you have not spoken to in the last seven years? Before we even get there, why don't we fix, you know, this silent treatment that you've been giving your wife for the past three years? Why don't you start talking to your mother or your daughter or your sister or this or that? And maybe we can start thinking globally at that, at that point. Wallahi, we pray for the people of Syria and for the people of Egypt. Ya May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease their difficulty, Ya Allah. And wherever people are oppressed, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eradicate the oppressors and the oppression, Ya Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the innocent wherever they may be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the wisdom to implement moderation and tolerance wherever possible, Ya Allah. Please keep in prayers Brother Tahir who passed away in Florida. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Also Brother Mahmoud Awadullah who was a community member here and he's moved to Texas just informed us that he's being diagnosed with tumor in his brain. Please do um, pray for his speedy recovery, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Also, inshallah, be aware of all the different activities that are taking place in the masjid. We have got an exciting program. Uh, the sciences of the Qur'an are taught between uh, Maghrib and Isha by Brother Umar Hussein. We have another program, a journey through the Qur'an that I teach to children on Tuesdays between 5, uh, I'm sorry, between 4, 5 and 7 o'clock. We also have Sheikh Zuhair teaching the Qur'an class on Fridays as well. And do remember that the registration is now open for both Pillars Academy, our full-time school, as well as the weekend school. And as you know, inshallah, beginning October, um, Obamacare or Covered California as it is called here in California. Remember that by 2014 everybody needs to have a health insurance otherwise he will be penalized. And inshallah for this we will be holding an educational program on what Covered California is and who qualifies for it. And I'll give you more information about that inshallah when possible. اللهم يا رب رحمك بالمستضعفين في كل مكان يا رب رحمك بالمستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم يا رب رحمك بالمستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم يا رب اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واستر لنا عيوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم ارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا وفك أسرانا وعاف مبتلانا واختم بالصالحات الباقيات آجالنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ومن القربة وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزيدكم ولذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون وقفل الصحيح الله